Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial video. In this video we'll be looking at the audio analyzer again. So if you haven't seen the previous video where we looked at the audio analyzer using 2D assets, this is a kind of, uh, well we tread on some of those ground but also go a little bit further potentially. So we're going to be looking at how we can control 3D assets. So I'm just going to start off by creating a face tracker and insert that into my scene. And I'm just going to go to the AR library and I'm just going to find a 3D object. So this could be a 3D object that you create yourself in Blender or another 3D modeling program. I'm just going to use a primitive shape for this tutorial. And I'm just going to pick this uh, dodecahedron. So my internet is being a little bit uh, slow today. Here we go. So I'll just import that. And I'm going to drag this dodecahedron onto my face tracker. And I'm going to move this up a little bit so it is just above the head. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to go to view and show my patch editor. And this we are working with version 89 of Spark AR. So again, this might not, uh, if you've updated to version 89 pre um, recently, it may not necessarily show up as this being a feature, but it is there. You have to go to audio and we're looking for the audio analyzer. I'm just going to add that in. So the audio analyzer, we have discussed it in the 2D video, but I'm just going to go over it again quickly here. The audio analyzer is a patch that allows us to take in either a microphone or audio M4A file using an audio clip player and then output it to a speaker, which would be outputted from here. And each of these bands represents a different uh, hertz so frequency range. So this is 0 to 400 and so on and so on and so on. So again, if you want to get more information, the patch information actually tells you all of this for you. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you quickly how you use a microphone setup. Uh, I'm not going to actually use the microphone setup uh, within this tutorial, but I'm just going to show you the setup for it. Um, just because I know I'm going to get some queries about that. So to do that, I'm just going to drag my microphone into my patch editor, hook it up to my audio input on my audio analyzer, and then I'm going to create a speaker. And this speaker I'm going to set to be my microphone and hook this up to my audio analyzer audio output. And then whatever frequency is or whatever my effect would be would link off these frequency bands here and my old microphone would be the input that would affect the result. I'm not going to use the microphone for this video, largely because I'm working on my Mac and um, the microphone, there's no, still no microphone input for testing within Spark AR on a PC or Mac, which is a little bit annoying. So I'm going to have to make do with an audio file and I'm just going to import one from the AR library. So I'm just going to go with the 90s sitcom theme that I've used in the 2D video. I'm going to select that audio clip and I'm going to add a multi-clip patches option from the properties. And what this does is this will create us a multi-clip controller, our audio player and a speaker for this audio file. I'm going to hook the speaker up to the audio output from my audio analyzer and hook the audio player into my input on my audio analyzer here. So this multi-clip controller is where we would have our triggers. So this would be either screen recording. So if we wanted it to be screen recording to fire it, we would drag the device down like so, sorry, drag the camera down like so, and then when video recording is enabled, there we go, so when the pulse is fired and it's turned on, it'll play, and this would then start triggering. Again, because I'm working on Mac and I want to show you this in action within the program, I'm just going to use the screen tap action. There we go, like so. So I want this dodecahedron to adjust its scale. Um, I don't want it to just adjust its scale to the frequency like we did with the 2D one. Um, we actually want it to have a nice more transition, so it transitions from zero up to um, the frequency that it's hitting. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to use an animation patch. I'm going to link that from the progress to a transition. And I want my starting value to be 0, 0, 0, so it doesn't have any, uh, so you can't see anything. So it would basically be not there. 
and I'm going to select my band once. I'm going to use a 0 to 400 hertz for this uh, demonstration. I'm going to create a pack and just hook it up to the three values like so, and then link this in to my end. So now if I just tap my screen, just to show you that this should uh, perform. Oh, hang on. There's a step I forgot there. I've actually got to select the dodecahedron and select the scale from the transformation and then hook it up to my transition. Otherwise, we're not going, nothing's going to happen. There we go. So now if I restart that and press play and tap screen, it will scale between 0 and 0 0.6, etc. The issue is, this is such a small value that we don't actually see anything happening. So I'm going to add a multiply after our pack and hook this up to the end. I'm going to multiply it by 2, let's say, and just restart that and press play. So when I click now, we should start to see it scale up, which it again isn't. And the reason for that is, is because we haven't got this to be triggered. So to trigger that, I'm just again going to hook this up for my screen tap. This could be a screen recording action, for example. Um, but instead of actually just hooking up directly, which is what I've just done, which is not what I want to do, I'm actually going to click and drag, create a pulse. So when it's turned on, I want it to play. When it's turned off, I want it to reverse. The reason I'm doing this is uh, largely if I was setting this up for a screen record, this just saves me a step uh, later on. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily need it for screen tap, but I'm including it just again for um, sanity's sake, really. So we start and play. So when I click the screen now, you should see that this 3D object is now scaling. I'm just going to mute my mic so uh, we don't get the audio picked up. So basically now when we click the button, the audio will play, it will scale and play, uh, just to scale. And once the audio clip uh, ends, it should scale to zero and disappear. We could also adjust the curve, so we could have it have a bit of a bounce if we wanted to. So now it'll be a bit more um, juttery as it first scales up and changes the values between the start and the ends. You can also adjust the speed by the animation duration. So it could make it scale a lot slower by adjusting the duration speed, like so. And obviously I can adjust the material on my 3D object like I would before. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is I'm also just going to create a loop animation and hook this to another transition. I'm just going to go 360 on all the axes, not 1360. There we go. Select my dodecahedron again, select the rotation, and just hook this up so it has a constant bit of rotation going on. And I'm just going to adjust its speed so it's not quite as dramatic. So now it has a bit of rotation and scaling going on. So we could, use, we could set up different objects to different bands, so different frequencies will trigger different um, amounts of scaling or firing off things. We can also have the visibility fired by the, um, when a frequency is hit. So for example, if we try, actually let's not use a decahedron, let's just create a plane. And hook the visibility of this plane up to, say, here. You see it's uh, not going to have it. So let's try and see if we can get this to fire. Now this might not work, I haven't tried this before, so this is me uh, on the fly playing about with this. Uh, maybe a pulse. So let's say it's greater than 400 and I want this to then flip visibility here. So when the frequency is higher than 400 it should fire off signal to say make this plane visible. So it probably won't because this frequency is not going to be, doesn't work like it works in decimal values. So let's just say 0 0.4. So 
So once it is greater than 0 0.4, the plane will become visible. When it isn't, it becomes invisible. And again, it's just playing about with it. This is a fairly new addition to uh, Spark. Um, let's just give it that plane for a second. But you can so you can start to combine 2D and 3D assets uh, together to create more complicated events or uh, effects, essentially. So this has just been another look at the audio analyzer, one of the new features of version 89. If, if any of us told you want to see, please let me know down in the description. Uh, there's a link to a uh, tutorial request form and the this project will also be available via Gumroad with a link down below if you don't want to uh, follow this guide and just want a pre-made template which will be basically what we went through in this video so i've been Stephen fisher remember to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you again soon goodbye